in the morning, we had a nice talk, a nice demo uh, about integration of uh, Microsoft and Azure service into ABAP and the uh, uh, ABAP environment with, with RUB. And I'm very happy that we now have some colleagues from the AWS team here, uh, and they will show us a similar integration with the AWS SDK for ABAP. So I hand over to you, uh, John and KK, the stage is yours. Thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, tuning into this session to learn how you can accelerate business process transformation by combining SAP and AWS services. So if you are an ABAP developer or an architect seeking to augment your SAP processes using purpose-built AWS services for data analytics, AI, ML, or apps and API, or even for generative AI, then this session is right for you. My name is uh, Krishna Kumar Ramadas. I go as KK. I'm a senior SAP innovation solutions architect here at AWS. So I focus on innovation topics for our customers and partners, uh, what we call an extent strategy. So I'm super excited to present this topic alongside with the, my colleague, John, on how you can accelerate uh, business process transformation using AWS SDK for SAP ABAP. John, can you please uh, introduce yourself as well? Sure thing, yeah. Hey guys, uh, John Friesen here. Um, very excited to uh, speak today. Uh, I'm on the uh, AWS uh, uh, team that specializes in the engineering for uh, SAP on AWS. I like to say that the mission of our team is to make it feel like SAP was born to run in the cloud. Uh, so we're very excited to talk about uh, my two favorite topics today, SAP and AWS. I'll hand it over to KK. Thanks, John. Uh, let's see uh, what you can expect in the next 45 minutes. First, we will quickly look at how SAP customers are striving to innovate and transform by combining SAP and AWS services. We will then cover the AWS SDK for SAP above in detail, uh, followed by developer experience and looking into some use cases. We'll also look into some cool demos in action. And finally, we'll show how you can get started with uh, this AWS SDK for SAP above. Next slide, John. So we see our SAP customers are priming to uh, transform and innovate. And here are some of the common trends uh, we see come across. And customers are constantly looking at creating new uh, revenue sources, and they wanted to apply machine learning on top of their data. They wanted to optimize their supply chain to improve cash flow. And they're also looking at implementing real-time monitoring solutions to take data-driven decisions and create an intelligent enterprise. Uh, not only that, uh, next slide, John, please. <laughs> and not only that, for uh, many customers, business process modernizations are at table stake. You know, innovation is a new battleground for a lot of enterprises. And if they don't innovate, uh, they perish. And customers' uh, mission-critical data reside in SAP. And according to a survey, 77% of world transaction touch SAP today. And customers are seeking to create value out of the data. And we see our customers are already combining SAP with the purpose-built AWS services as part of their transformation journey. Uh, for example, uh, next slide, please, John. <laughs> Zolando, the largest retailer in Europe, is already leveraging AWS services to automate their uh, invoice processing, and they are already seeing significant business benefits. And same way, like Invista uses AML services and doing visual inspections today, and they are already reducing defects and improving the overall operation efficiency. Uh, same with our customer line, they are using AWS services to enhance a customer experience and they have an ordering uh, app built using AWS services that serves 25,000 uh, retailers. 
So now let's take a look at the various integration options for how you can combine SAP with the AWS services. And we are seeing customers building extensions on SAP business technology platform, and they wanted to leverage uh, AWS uh, services to further augment some of the processes that are not covered by uh, BTP services. For that, we have developed joint reference architectures with SAP to help you choose the right patterns for integrating with AWS services. So we also learn from our customers and including above developers like you. And they are also looking at building native integrations with the AWS services directly from the above stack. You know, to close this gap, we introduced the AWS SDK for SAP ABAP to help customers seamlessly integrate with 200 plus AWS services. So now I will hand it over to John. So who is going to cover this approach in detail? John, take it away, please. Yeah, thanks, KK. Uh, yeah, it's really exciting. You know, uh, KK and I are both longtime SAP practitioners. We come from the SAP world. And uh, sometimes I get tired of... Uh, going to cocktail parties and getting cornered by some Python programmer or Java programmer bragging about the cool stuff that they can do with uh, AWS services. Yes, yes, I know you can consume 200 plus services from AWS in your Python program and you can benefit from the scalability and the elasticity and security of AWS in your Java program. But I live in the SAP world. I program in ABAP. So what's my option? ABAP is this amazing language. I, I, I uh, am uh, willing to say uh, uh, loudly that uh, I love the ABAP language. It's ahead of its time, a fourth generation language with uh, an integrated data dictionary, embedded SQL, strongly typed, object oriented. This is a perfect language for consuming web services. So why are the Java programmers and Python programmers having all the fun? And uh, that's why we were so proud to release the AWS SDK for SAP ABAP. This went into general availability at the end of June. So finally, an ABAP programmer has a seat at the table in this amazing world of uh, cloud services. And so all those benefits that uh, the Java programmers and Python programmers were having, uh, now an ABAP pro programmer can, can too, the, the elasticity, the scalability, the security, and so forth. And um, uh, you know, my favorite part is that an, an ABAP programmer, even a junior ABAP programmer, can now participate as a first-class citizen in the consumption of AWS services. Now, we'll talk a little bit about the technical details of our SDK. Uh, you know, we have 11 different SDKs for um, uh, Java and Python and Swift, Kotlin, Rust, Go, .NET. Uh, so we have a, a broad set of SDKs. We wanted our ABAP SDK to feel like it was born inside an SAP system. So we didn't want it to feel like this um, alien presence in your system. So we made an early design decision to base the ABAP SDK in pure ABAP. No agents, no third party libraries, it's pure ABAP. And so consuming the, the, our APIs through the ABAP SDK is as simple as calling a method on an object. We'll, we'll look at a little bit of code later. Uh, so the point of, is, if you know how to import a transport into an SAP system, then you already know how to install the SDK. You don't even have to look at our documentation, just import a transport. By the way, you also know how to patch it, and you also know how to uninstall it. If you've ever configured an SAP system in an IMG, then you know how to configure the SDK. We didn't make it an INI file like our, our other SDKs. We know that SAP systems are configured with transportable config. So uh, in short, the architecture of the SDK is a pure ABAP, which makes it broadly compatible from NetWeaver 7.4.0 up to the latest S4HANA 2023. Now, I mentioned that our SDK uh, is a first class citizen among our SDKs. We didn't want to make some mini SDK. We didn't want to curate the services. Hmm, what are the 10 services that an ABAP programmer needs? No we make our SDK a full-fledged SDK that can consume every single AWS service. Now it's true that uh, it might, there might not be that many business cases for consuming Kinesis video streams into an SAP system, 
But if you can think of a business case, you can do it. And uh, this is uh, probably one of the really exciting parts about the SDK that it's easy in the SAP world if you hear an announcement from AWS about some new service that we've come up with. And we, we, by the way, we just had our reInvent conference and we introduced 14 new services. So it's easy to tune that stuff out and say, oh, that's not for me. I live in the SAP world. That's just cloud stuff. But the thing is, because our SDK supports every, every AWS service, it means that every AWS announcement, every AWS blog is an ABAP announcement. So at reInvent, if you um, heard one of our uh, uh, announcements of a new product, we announced our, our new product called Q, for example. Um, it's sort of an AI chatbot, uh, but that was an ABAP announcement because we include it in our SDK. And uh, typically when we introduce a new service or feature, and we're introducing new features every day, uh, if you read that blog or read the announcement, the next day, 24 hours later, you can go and download the latest SDK and consume it. So it's a very exciting time for an ABAP programmer to um, stay tuned into the stuff that AWS is doing and find it immediately available in the ABAP SDK. Now we like to start from the customer experience at AWS and who's the customer of an SDK? It's you, the ABOP developer. That's why we're so excited to speak here at ABOP Conf, uh, uh, conference, specifically for uh, people like us who love ABOP. Uh, this is a builder tool. So you, the builders who, who write the code, you're the ones who are going to consume this. So we wanted to think about what the SDK would feel like for you. So I'm just gonna show a couple lines of code here. This is sort of a classic, uh, program consuming an AWS service. The first part is uh, uh, creating what we call a session object that establishes the security connection to the AWS endpoints and uh, maps the SAP user to the appropriate, uh, what we call an IAM role, that's the role on the AWS side, appropriate for their job. And we, we key into what we call an SDK profile. If you've ever configured any kind of profile in an SAP application, then you know how this works. All the configuration is grouped under a kind of a, a profile uh, ID. And um, you key into that configuration, which pulls into all the configuration, um, checks the user's authorizations in PFCG, authenticates to AWS, maps you to the correct role, and then you pass that session object to the creation of the API objects for each of our services. And we have 200 plus services. Here I'm creating an API object for our S3 service, which is probably our most famous service. That's our, our, our cloud storage service. So any uh, ABAP program is gonna start with these two lines, at least uh, to create the session and then start creating API objects for the different clients that you want to consume. And then a program that consumes a service, here we're gonna use that S3 service to pull in uh, an object from our cloud storage. It'll have typically a one-liner. Look at how easy this is. This is just calling a method on, on an object. So a junior ABAP programmer can write this code. Uh, here I'm, I'm getting an object, passing it the bucket name and the object key I want to pull in. Then I take that received object and just pass it to my own code, which might parse an Excel file or look at an, an invoice file, who knows what. Uh, and finally, error processing. Uh, how do you handle errors in ABAP? through exceptions. And so we made the uh, all of the granular error cases that can come up from a web service uh, represented as ABAP exceptions. So it's very easy for your program to react to the exceptions of, uh, in different ways appropriate to the type of exception. So we, we um, understand that you're, you, the ABAP programmers, you're not like Python programmers who probably have root access on some Linux box where they're coding. You work in a team and there's different uh, roles and responsibilities on the team. And we wanted to make sure that we didn't distort or change the, the roles and responsibilities in an SAP team. So the SAP security administrator is still responsible for defining the permissions that an SAP user has. They define the PFCG role, and that gives you the authorization to consume an SDK profile and map to a certain IAM role. Meanwhile, the IAM administrator, that's the security admin on the AWS side, is still responsible for the granular permissions uh, on the AWS uh, side of things. The basis administrator is still performing transports and technical prereqs, and you, the ABAP programmer, are doing all the cool, fun stuff, uh, making magic with ABAP code. So um, 
I'm going to hand it over to uh, KK to talk a little bit more about um, uh, Dreaming Big and uh, uh, what you can do with the SDK. Hey, thanks, John. Uh, and we told you that uh, ABAP SDK would enable native integration, and then you would be able to integrate with 200 plus uh, AWS services. And uh, now let's take a look at what type of cool use cases you can build with the AWS SDK for SAP ABAP. So you can now easily integrate your SAP stack with uh, Amazon S3, which is our simple storage service for uh, exchanging files between partners or external systems. You can also leverage uh, AAML services like Amazon Textract for your intelligent uh, document processing uh, use cases, or even leverage our uh, neural language translation service like Amazon Translate for building multilingual applications at a scale. So these are some of the incredible possibilities you get when you start uh, integrating with 200 plus AWS services. And one of the common use case we see with our customers is intelligent document processing. So let me uh, walk through high level on how you can combine AML services from the above stack for your intelligent document processing scenario. And as you know, like document processing is critical for any business process, I'm pretty sure uh, document processing is used in uh, finance as part of the accounts payable, accounts receivable. If you're an insurance company, you could be processing documents. But document processing is sometimes can be challenging and error prone because manual processing can uh, lead to uh, errors and it is time consuming. And using optical character recognition technology uh, would be applicable for simple documents and you have to write uh, templatized rules and oftentimes uh, it breaks if your uh, vendor changes the format of the document or the document itself is gets complex. So with intelligent document processing and using AWS services uh, like Amazon Textract, uh, which is our fully managed machine learning service, uh, which will let you extract virtually from uh, any document and no uh, machine learning experience is required. And also like uh, you can also use Amazon Translate service to translate contents of the documents. And all of these are like API call away. And now you can use the AWS SDK for SAP ABAP to build uh, intelligent document processing uh, extensions from natively from the SAP application stack. So let's take a look at the architecture uh, of how this would look like and how you implement such uh, solutions. So what you see here is an SAP s or, or like an uh, SAP application that has an ABAP stack. Uh, so the bad minimum, as John mentioned, the requirements is uh, net fever 740. And then once you import the AWS SDK for SAP ABAP transports, now you can build applications uh, and you get the client libraries and that you can use within the application to interact with various AWS services. Like you can upload the document to S3 that is coming from your external partner and then invoke Textract APIs with just few lines of code as John uh, showed earlier and extract information from the documents. And you can also translate uh, information from the document using Amazon Translate if you have multilingual uh, speakers or uh, multilingual personas across your business uh, uh, platform. And you can also do all sort of validation and send alerts using Amazon Simple Notification Service. So you can just start integrating with these uh, services natively from the stack. You don't have to build point-to-point -point integration and there is no middleware is required, right? So you can just natively uh, integrate from the above layer. So I will hand it over to John now where he will demonstrate some cool demos using AWS SDK for SAP above in action. Uh, over to you, John. Thanks so much, KK. Um, and you know, that that the scenario you were just talking about, that uh, uh, intelligent document processing, uh, we're seeing so many customers interested in it. Um, I, I think uh, you or a colleague of yours put out a blog um, describing the scenario in, in detail. So anyone who wants to read uh, some of the details about how that kind of thing is achieved and what you can do, um, please check out our uh, our uh, blogs and uh, uh, keep your eyes peeled for for many more. 
We're very, very interested in uh, helping customers dream about uh, what they can do in a um, uh, in an SAP system with AWS. And I, I think uh, I like to say that uh, you know it's it's like you're a chess master. And, you know, if you ever see someone play chess, they can move so fast. Uh, because they, they don't see the wrong moves. They know that the knight can't move diagonal, diagonally, so they just don't see the move. But with the AWS SDK for SAP ABAP, now you can move that knight diagonally. So it, you, the ABAP programmers, uh, uh, now it, it's your turn to uh, dream about what you can do. Uh, but to understand that, we're going to give you some examples. Um, just some simple examples to distill the scenarios down to their uh, basics. And I think you'll start to get a flavor uh, for what's possible. So uh, we're going to we're going to do a um, high wire act in here and do some uh, uh, live demos uh, in a, a system. Now, uh, here's a scenario we're going to uh, demonstrate using our Amazon Translate service. Now, our Amazon Amazon Translate service can translate uh, from one language to another. I think there are five thousand different language combinations. Uh, you know, to, you know, source language and target language uh, language possible. Um, it's real time. Um, and it's, uh, so it's extremely flexible. And um, I hope you can think for a moment about where something like that could be used. Um, this is not necessarily about translating, customizing data. This is about translating transactional data in real time. So suppose I'm at a company that works in a, a country that speaks uh, several different languages. And when you're processing a service order, um, you know, some uh, machine broke or something and, and you need someone to process that service order and you don't know ahead of time what the native language of that person processing the service order is. In fact, you don't know the language uh, necessarily of the person submitting the sales of the service order. And so you want to make sure that the person processing the service order can read it in their native language and uh, and understand it so kind of break down um, a potential language barrier so if you can um, implement a simple batty a couple lines and then have the cloud do the heavy lifting of translating the um, uh, service order in real time into another language then uh, uh, i think you could imagine how that might facilitate a company in this situation so let's just go pop into a system and have a little fun uh, i'm going to start actually with a hello world program um, and this, by the way, the code for this program is on our documentation website. So when you uh, download the SDK, get your favorite basis person to install it in a sandbox and try it out, you can copy and paste this program. Uh, this is a, a kind of an old school report. Um, and it just uh, translates a phrase from one language to another. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter in some, uh, some uh, phrase, let's say. Um, uh, ABAP is my favorite programming language. I'm not shy about uh, declaring my allegiance, and I'm going to translate it from English to Spanish. So this is this is not something that was pre-baked. I'm typing this now. Uh, so this is transactional data, and not something that was configured ahead of time. Uh, I'll apologize for my Spanish. Uh, ABAP es mi uh, lenguaje de programación favorito. Oh boy. Okay, I uh, apologize again for my Spanish, but you get the idea. Did you notice how fast that was? That was real time. So uh, let's go take a look at the code here since we're all coders uh, um, on this uh, conference. I uh, will just pop into the source code for a second. And uh, you know, this is an old school uh, uh, ABAP report. The whole thing is 36 lines and the translation is a one-liner. So uh, even a junior programmer could enhance any business process or transaction with a translation of text. We, we uh, presented this uh, idea at, um, at one of our hackathons. We've been doing sort of a world tour of hackathons. We did one in Bangalore um, recently. And um, one of our customers said, uh, you know, they had a system, uh, they have two ERP systems. One is in Japanese, and that creates it, makes it kind of opaque to the service team, who sometimes ha have to go in and do stuff, but they they need to look at some uh, data, uh, an invoice that's not uh, formatting correctly or whatever, and it's in Japanese. It's very hard for them, and so uh, you can imagine how you could even even for your support team uh, use a function like this to um, make some things that are opaque 
uh, uh, unopaque to your global service team. So we looked at the code for this. Let's go have some fun and uh, go do a, a, a business process now. I promised you that we were going to go create a service order and translate it in real time. So the code here is, is exactly like the Hello World program I just uh, showed you, except that it's implemented in a baddie. So nice, clean core, just a few lines of custom code, and all the heavy lifting is done in the cloud. And uh, we're just going to put in something here. Um, what's, it, what's going to break today that we're going to submit a, a service order? Um, uh, my umbrella uh, is uh, leaking in the rain. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> um, and we'll throw that into the uh, notes section here too. We'll need a uh, sold to party. This will be our sold to party and uh, add in a couple other. By the way, this is a uh, Hana 2021, I think, but uh, the same um, technique will work across from NetWeaver 740 to the latest. Uh, okay, that should be uh, all of our data here. So I'm, I'm submitting my service order. I'm an English speaker but I don't know if the person fixing my umbrella is going to be a native English speaker or not. So I've saved this. And uh, if we go down to notes here, look at this here. I'm going to, sh I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Look at this. My, my, the notes are in twice, once in English and once in Spanish. And again, that was real time. The user entering the service order didn't even know it was happening. Um, their, their authorizations, PSTG role, uh, allowed them to do the translation in the uh, in the back end. And uh, what do we have here? Mi paraguas gotea con la lluvia. Oh gosh, I think I, I think I really messed up my pronunciation on that one, but you get the idea. So this is pretty exciting. I, I just love this uh, demo. Uh, and I hope it gives you an idea of uh, what a few lines of code could do. Uh, so let's go uh, to another demo. I'm just gonna watch the clock and make sure that we have uh, time. Uh, I've got another one, which is pretty wild. This is a new demo. I just gave it at uh, reInvent, and everyone was really excited by it. So uh, in this case, uh, we're going to demonstrate our IoT service. Now, AWS has a broad set of IoT-related services for communicating with IoT devices, managing a fleet of IoT devices, routing data, and so forth. We're going to do something pretty simple here. Um, I want you to imagine that I have uh, a shop floor, and I've got some AWS compatible uh, Anden lights. These are those kind of multicolored uh, lights that are on industrial machinery to show you the status of the machine. Now, since it's AWS compatible, uh, it means that any of our SDKs can talk to it, and which means that our ABAP SDK can talk to it because our ABAP SDK can talk to any of our services. So if an ABAP system can change the status of an Anden light on a machine, what could you do with that? Well, in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to process actually a repair order in uh, S4HANA, and it's going to change the status uh, of the light as the repair order goes through its statuses. So, um, you know, if you think of, um, you know, SAP GUI is yesterday's user interface, Fiori is today's user interface, but what if the whole stock floor was your user interface for your business process? So that's what we're going to do. Um, I, uh, for, for this purpose, hopefully uh, uh, you can still see my camera. I might have to stop uh, uh, staring or do some kind of uh, dance to make sure that, uh, uh, that my camera is visible because I'm going to be showing you a physical device. So I'll tell you what, um, I'm just going to sh stop and uh, show you the device for a second and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, go do a dance between my screen share and, uh, and my device here. So uh, activate my uh, networking. Stop my screen sharing for a second. And uh, what I have here is uh, a homegrown. I'm going to have to stop my screen blur so you can see this too. Uh, so, there we go. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So here, here we have a, a homemade, uh, Wi Fi enabled, battery powered, AWS compatible and in light, uh, which I use for reinvent. So this is uh, something I can uh, take with me to trade shows and so forth. And uh, this is uh, uh, AWS compatible. So it's going to, uh, talk to my uh, uh, SAP system, and we're going to be able to change the statuses here on the fly. So let me go uh, back to my uh, screen share, and we'll go have some fun. Let's go pop into. So I think for starters, I'll just do a quick, quick uh, hello world program here. Um, here's my hello world program, which uh, is extremely 
uh, simple. If I, if I jump down here, we'll see the one liner that publishes a message to an IoT device, and it's just sending sort of JSON payload, and that's, that's all there is to it. And um, uh, if we go uh, uh, run this report, uh, I'm going to go and uh, set the uh, light to uh, red. Uh, so yeah, I got to power up my uh, device again. Hang on. And then I'll, I guess I'll have to. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if my my screen is uh, my camera shows or not, but what I'll have to do. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to show both of these at the same time. Um, but my Abot program is is changing the status of my light. Um, I'll just uh, stop my sharing for a second so I can prove that the light is uh, changing status. So I'll just uh, uh, do it again, change the status to red. And there we go. My ABAP program just did that. Uh, just a, basically one line of, of uh, ABAP code. So uh, uh, that'll turn that light off, and then we'll go try a business process. OK. Now we'll go and have the real fun. Go back to my business process here in S for HANA. And uh, what we're going to process here is a, uh, a repair order. Now, for this, I'm going to just switch to a different uh, demo user to process the repair order. So I'll just pop in here as a sort of man. Process my in house repair. So someone's complained that their um, cooling pump it has has uh, broken here. So I'm in, in this is a standard uh, repair. I've got a repair object here. The cooling water circulation pump will just pop into the uh, uh, pre-checks. Go into edit mode and we'll start the repair. Just, uh, make sure this thing is uh, active. Good. Start the repair. Okay, great. So my, my light just turned red. Uh, if you, I don't know if you guys could see the, the camera or not. Um, uh, but uh, now I'm going to go and uh, go into edit mode here. And I'm, I'm uh, going to pop into the... Uh, oops. I clicked on the wrong thing. Let's go back to that. Yes, going to pop into my repair. Uh, display the repair order. Here we go. And uh, now I'm going to go into edit mode. And just a standard repair process. I'm going to put it into an in process. And what will happen is that the uh, light just turned yellow. And uh, I'll just, I'll just uh, stop my uh, screen for a second. You see, the light is yellow. So now the repair person going down to the shop floor, uh, they've, they've marked the, the object as in, in progress in the SAP system. And now they don't have to worry about operating on the wrong cooling pump. There might be 10 or 20 identical cooling pumps, but the one with the yellow light is the one that they're supposed to repair. So I've already improved the uh, quality of my process here by ensuring that uh, I, um, I, the, the uh, person doing the repair, am uh, processing the, the uh, repairing the, the correct system. And um, now I'll just uh, set it to released. And uh, this will uh, change the status into green which tells the people on the shop floor that the device has been repaired and they should test it. And then as a final step, I'll uh, go and mark it as completed. And that turns off the lights. Uh, you know, they've tested the, the uh, uh, device, so they, they're confirming that the repair was successful, so it's completed. Lights are off, business as usual. Okay, so that's a, that's a, a pretty nifty uh, 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 integration and um, really exciting to think of the, of the possibilities if your SAP system can um, uh, send data to an IoT device to change a status like this or receive data from it. For example, we have um, uh, devices called Monotron, AWS Monotron, which uh, collects uh, statistics like a vibration data or temperature data from a device that you could imagine if you create a repair order for a machine, um, could you enhance the repair order uh, enrich it with uh, uh, metrics from the device itself, telemetry from the physical device itself, so that the repair person can see when they're processing and think, oh, okay, I can see this thing's got an elevated temperature, it's experiencing vibrations that are outside of parameters, and have that embedded into the repair ticket automatically. Okay, so that's a, I think that's a pretty exciting one. Uh, I think we've got time for one more demo before we wrap it up. So I'll just do a real quick one here. Uh, at the end of September, Amazon announced 
Amazon Bedrock. This is our generative AI um, capability. And you know how generative AI works. You, you give it a prompt, um, you know, hey, Bedrock, uh, tell me a joke about Java programmers. And uh, then it generates a, 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 some joke for you. So how could that be used in a business process? Imagine that you're doing back order processing in your Esper HANA system. So you went through the available to promise. Um, some customer ordered a bicycle. You promised it by February. You missed the date. Now you've got to notify the customer that your order, your product is bad, back ordered. So you're, you're giving the customer some bad news. You want to um, sugarcoat the bad news by uh, writing them a little poem about their uh, back order. Okay, so a silly idea, but this is going to use... Uh, four different AWS services. We're going to prompt Bedrock, hey Bedrock, uh, write a poem about the back order and make a cute image uh, showing the product. Um, put the image in Amazon S3, that's our cloud storage, and serve it to the user in uh, CloudFront, and then generate an email and send it with uh, Amazon simple email service. So let's just uh, go ahead and uh, try this thing out and uh, have some fun. I'm going to go and uh, log back into my demo system here. And we're going to go look at our uh, back order situation. This is a demo system uh, that's a couple of years old, so there will be plenty of uh, back orders in this system, I think. Uh, so let's get our main screen up here. I'm going to go to sales order fulfillment uh, issues. And um, we can see here that we've got, <laughs> we've got back orders that are um, hundreds or thousands of days late. Uh, oh, boy, we've, we've done a bad, uh, uh, a bad job here. So I think I'm just going to pop into um, one of these. Let's just go take a look at um, this one here, 2691. Pull this up. Loading, loading. Here we go. OK. So we got this is a customer, Acme. Uh, what did they order? They ordered a professional printer, um, and it was due, uh, I think, uh, we have the uh, delivery date was supposed to be oh, March 3rd of 2020. Very, very old. Um, this is way, way late. I have to send the customer some bad news. Um, we'll go pop into my uh, system here and run our sugar-coated um, program here. And we'll just pull in uh, a variant. This is 2621. And um, let's just see how this thing works here. So I'm giving it the order number. I've got to generate a notification. Remember that I'm using Bedrock. So the ABAP program is going to prompt Bedrock. Hey, Bedrock, write a poem. And uh, here's what the prompt looks like. Uh, uh, hey, Bedrock, the customer's order of uh, printer professional ABC is late. The customer name is Acme. The order number is 2691, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I'm telling it in, in English language um, about the order. And then I'm saying, please write a silly poem. And uh, down below, I say, also, show me a picture of a cute animal playing with printer professional ABC. So I'm, I'm, giving, a, I'm giving Bedrock some uh, prompts. And uh, so this was 2691. Let's just go see what uh, was written here. And uh, here, here we have the resulting email. Um, and in, in fact, it wrote a little limerick uh, about, it's Acme Co about their, uh, their order. There once was a company called Acme whose printer order caused some dismay. The pr professional ABC order number 2691 was due on the third, but there's delay. So it's a perfect little uh, uh, poem about the back order. Uh, and it also says, um, we'll get you this product sent just as, as soon as this little guy is done with it. And we get a little fox with a, a printer. Uh, maybe we'll uh, just pop into a couple others just for fun, uh, since we're having a good time. Here's a, a customer which uh, ordered a, a bicycle. Uh, there once was a customer named Toys For You who ordered a C990 bike, it's true. The order number is 4720, but the bike didn't come in plenty. We're sorry it's late. We'll get it to you. I mean, it, it rhymed the order number in the poem. It's amazing. It's also, it's obviously not a form letter. So this is a different experience than getting a, a very cold form letter. And of course you get a picture of a dog riding a, a bicycle. Uh, so 
I, I hope that this will give you, the customer, some uh, ideas of um, just the possibilities of uh, generative AI um, in uh, Bedrock uh, uh, um, in an SAP system using our SDK. So I'll hand it back over to KK to talk a little bit about um, what you can do for next steps. Hey, thanks, John, uh, for all those uh, cool demos. Um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, like uh, the possibilities are endless here. Uh, when you start with uh, integrating with the 200 plus AWS services and all natively now you can do that from the above stack, uh, whether uh, leveraging apps and API or IoT or uh, even generative AI, um, you know, that would fit, fit your business use case. So uh, let's see how you can get started with uh, you know, building and innovating with AWS SDK for SAP above. So you can download this SDK and install it in your sandbox. You can, you know, scan this QR code or uh, from the download link that has been provided. And we also have a developer guide out there uh, where you can learn about the capabilities and how to use them and develop your own concept. And as we always say, uh, now you can go build. Uh, with uh, above uh, SDK and with 200 plus uh, AWS services. And if you have any questions, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, so our contact information is provided below. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks to ABAPCONT for giving us a chance to talk about our favorite topics, uh, SAP ABAP and AWS. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what you, the customers, can do with AWS. Uh, yeah, thank you, KK. Thank you, John. Um, to be honest, this was this was simply fantastic from my perspective. This could be really a game changer for us as a developer, as an ABAP developer, because to be honest, uh, I didn't know about the uh, AWS SDK for ABAP before this ABAP conf. So this is really cool. And uh, I think I will try it out as, as soon as possible. Yeah, it's generating, generating a lot of interest. Uh, we did a hackathon in uh, uh, Germany uh, a few months ago and um, one in LA back in, uh, I think, October, and this one in, in Bangalore. So keep your eyes open. I think we're having a lot of uh, fun uh, getting customers into these hackathons, and um, it, it we'll do these two- or three-day events where they come up with a business case, and then we just do a proof of concept right there at the hackathon. It's been lots of fun. Vienna and Austria is a good place for a hackathon, I think. I think uh, uh, we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Message <laughs> Okay. Uh, so I saw a lot of questions. Um, maybe yeah, we uh, just ask one or two of them and, uh, and then we, we just summarize uh, the questions uh, for the meter speaker. But the first important question is, uh, will this be also available in the embedded ABAP cloud or as for HANA public cloud? It's a question from Robert. Yeah, that's a great question. Probably a frequently asked question. Uh, if not available yet, um, but I would describe us as very interested, and uh, that's as much as I can say. Um, but uh, we wrote it in pure ABAP uh, with the goal of having broad compatibility across as many platforms as possible. Today, it's only available for on-premises. You can run it in RISE, uh, which is the on-premises edition. Uh, you can run it in other clouds. You can run it on-premises and consume cloud services. Uh, it doesn't yet support uh, the um, SAP cloud variant of ABAP, uh, but we're very interested. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, uh, one one very important question. Uh, do you know about any plans to go open source with this to provide the source code as a Git repo? Um, it's actually a, an interesting question. Um, not today. Our, our code is in a namespace, so a customer can't pull it in from Git because they don't have a, the, the authorization for a namespace. So, so today it's transports. Um, uh, it, it, the co code, of course, is visible um, to customers because uh, uh, ABAP is, uh, is uh, visible. Um, yeah, but, but, but only because, after, uh, after importing the transport request. So. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so it, uh, the Git, unfortunately, the Git model uh, doesn't work so well with namespace code. Not yet, anyways. Uh, uh, perhaps in the future, it'll be possible to pull in namespace code from a Git repo. Uh, it's not available yet. Okay. Yeah, so thank you. This was very informative. Uh, was a nice demo like the, the Microsoft guys in the, in the morning. And I would say we have a short break of five minutes and we will see you in the meet at speaker session in about one and a half hour. 
Thank, thank you, you again. Thank you, Chan. Thank you, KK. Thank you. Thank you.